Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Depending on where you are, you may have noticed this week in Windows 11, and I believe Windows 10 as well, this little icon down next to your search bar, a blue and pink thing that says Pre. So this is a preview of Microsoft Copilot. They're rolling it out, so you may or may not have it already. Some people I know have had it a little while. Others, depending on your location, may still need to wait a little bit. And when you click it, you get this box over here on the right, the Microsoft Copilot. If you've used Bing AI before, it might look a wee bit familiar. And in some ways, really, that for the most part is what it is. So rather than having a browser window, having Bing AI, you've now got this Copilot over on the right hand side. It can do the things that you would normally do in Bing AI. You can get it to write code, you can get it to write language and brainstorm and all those things that a, a large language model can normally do. It can interact a little bit with your machine. So if we have a bit of a scroll down here, we can see this is on the Microsoft page and they're just introducing what it is. We can see their image there, same as what I've got, the right hand side, the co-pilot. And then they do list some tasks that you can do with it. So it can interact with your machine in a few ways. These bullet points here represent most, but I don't think quite all, but most of them. And it's really important to note that in some ways this is just the Bing AI interface, maybe a little bit more convenient. Certainly I could see myself having it open and say if I'm coding an R, I can just come over to it and ask it to write or edit some code or do the other things that you might normally do with it. So if we have a look at some of these, we can see I put in turn on dark mode for any of these actions on the machine. It does give you the prompt. So would you like to switch to dark mode? I click yes, and it does. And you can see that it didn't just do dark mode for the Copilot app, it actually went to dark mode for the whole machine. As well as being able to type in text, you can add images and screenshots. You can also use the microphone. So I might click use the microphone, open notepad. And again, we can see that every, every action, it does add the prompt. So would I like to open notepad? Yes, I would and it has just off screen opened notepad for me. It can only, to my experience so far, open Microsoft apps. So things that are built into window, notepad and paint and things like that, it will open. I can ask it to open a PowerPoint or Word document, but only a new one. So with this current iteration, it can't interact with files, and I think there's a bit of confusion around that. I don't think they've communicated it as well as they could have done. If I ask it to open a particular file, it'll give me instructions on how to go about opening a file. It won't try and do it for me. And it does make sense from a privacy and security point of view that they're starting with these very basic functions, and hopefully though it will roll out into more sophisticated things over time. We can see here some of the other examples, mute the volume, change the wallpaper, take a screenshot, set the focus timer, open the file explorer. So open is one of your main verbs. Um, snap my windows if you wanted that. The troubleshooters are really just your usual built-in kind of troubleshooting. It's just appearing over here in the copilot instead. If I said, for instance, where they've got the example, my audio isn't working, it'll give you the same questions and prompts that it normally would. If we look at the different versions of copilot, so we can see, and I think the branding here is maybe a little bit confusing as well. The difference, we've got the Copilot, the Copilot Pro, and then the 365. The Pro and the 365 are going to be the paid versions. And so that is where they will appear in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, Outlook. You'll be able to do AI functions in there. Here it was just been scrolling past. So I just asked it brainstorm five ideas for my next YouTube video about R. As it does with the regular Bing AI, when you ask it things, you do get other search options that come up. We can also ask it to do a particular task. So maybe we want to make a PowerPoint about cats. When we type things into the box, uh, like you might have noticed in Outlook and possibly Word, depending on how you have it set up, it does have the uh, autocomplete. As I was typing each word, it was suggesting with the option to hit tab what the next word could be. We can see here it has produced a set of slides. It's got some questions here. Depending on how you put in your prompt, 
I tried that earlier with a slightly vaguer prompt and it asked for a couple of more things. It said, how many slides do you want? What is your audience? So things to help get a gauge of what the content should be. One thing that is a little bit misleading uh, and people have fallen for is if I now go and ask it to save this PowerPoint, then what it does is, so we can see here, I've updated, I asked it to put some images and save it to cats.pptx on the desktop. And it says that it did that. But if I have a look on the desktop, there is actually nothing there. So possibly this is functionality that's coming where it will automatically be able to save content out of the copilot onto your computer. Currently it says that it does, but it in fact doesn't. So that's something to watch out for. If I do want to get that PowerPoint out, uh, I need to go and manually get it. Some of the time, if you ask it to save, it will just give you the saving steps, but other times it will go through, it will say that it has saved a file and it hasn't. So that's just something to look out for. What I would be using this for probably most though is just being able to code. So here I've asked it um, for a fairly general piece of R code, and we can see that it gives a little bit of description of what you need to do. Uh, you've got the actual block of code with the copy button. Copy button certainly very convenient for being able to pull just the bits you want out of there. Uh, and as Bing AI normally does, it gives a few references as well. Overall, this is a pretty handy little tool. Maybe just a little bit cleaner than having to have another browser window open. Uh, certainly I could also see instances where maybe browsers are a little bit locked down, but if this is just built into the system, it's going to be something that's there for you to use. And amongst the other Microsoft bits and pieces, they have been adding AI somewhat quietly to some of their other things. So for instance, Microsoft Paint did a video recently on that, now has a background removal, and it also has, uh, was testing image generation as well. With the Photos app, there's now a little blur function. So little bits and pieces of AI functionality are creeping into the other Microsoft tools as well. So this is not the only thing they're doing with AI, and I would be just watching out for new developments each, each time I've found that I'm loading up the Microsoft tools. Just different bits and pieces will have been added. So that's it for today. Uh, definitely have a play of Copilot when it appears on your machine. I think you'll find that there are a few handy little uses of having it there. Uh, also with it having ChatGPT 4.0 in the background, if you've only been using 3.5, it's nice to get that access as well. So that's it for today. I'll be back soon with more videos on AI, R, stats, and research.